Hey guys, Jake here, coming at you with another math lesson today. Today I'm going to be talking about critical numbers and critical points, which will kind of continue to build on the whole, you know, local versus global maximum and minimum values that we've been talking about throughout this week. Critical numbers are the way that you kind of f actually find your maximum and minimum values, whether it's local or global. These critical numbers are going to play a big role in finding where those local maximum values occur and then the critical points is kind of what comes into play when you're trying to actually find those maximum and minimum values. So I want to show you this with two different examples. The first one I'm going to show you is how to find the critical numbers and critical points on a graph and then I'm going to show you an example of a function and we're going to algebraically find these critical numbers. Before we get into those examples though what I do want to mention is what a critical number actually is. So this is really all you need to know about what a critical number actually is. If you take the derivative of your function and plug in C into the derivative, if it either gives you zero or if the derivative does not exist at that point, then that C value is a critical number. So to find critical numbers, all you really have to do is take your function and figure out where the derivative of that function equals zero, or in other words, where the slope of the function is zero. So essentially, we'll get into this in a minute, but what that looks like on a graph is where your function has a flat slope. Or if your function does if your function's derivative rather doesn't exist at that point, then you know c will be a critical number. And then if you're trying to find a critical point, a point is just an xy coordinate, right? So if you have the critical number and you know that that's the x value of where your critical point is, to find the critical point, you just have to plug that x value into your original function to figure out the y value that matches up with that critical number. So that's really all it is, all there is to that. So let's go ahead and jump into the first example. So this is our first example, um, figuring out the critical numbers based on a graph. So just by looking at this graph, knowing the fact that a critical number is where local minimum or maximum values occur, we can see that this graph is gonna have two critical numbers, right? Because we can see a local minimum right here, all the points around this point are higher than this point. And we have a local maximum right here. All the other points around this point are lower than that point. So seeing the fact that we have one local minimum here and one local maximum here, we can tell that those two points should be where our critical numbers occur. So to look at this graph and figure out what the critical numbers actually are, all we have to do is look at the x values that line up with those two points. So you can see that this local minimum occurs when x equals 2. And then you can see this local maximum occurs where x equals 4. So our critical numbers for this function would just be 2 and 4. So taking a quick second to talk about what the graph actually looks like at these two points, we can see I've drawn the, uh, the tangent line to our function at this point. And you can see that when we're at our local maximum or when we're at our critical number or our critical point, our function has a tangent line with a flat slope. The tangent line being flat is the same as saying that the derivative of our function equals zero, right? We can see that f prime of four would be zero because the slope at that point is zero because it's a flat line. Our other critical number at x equals two, this is kind of what it looks like if you're looking at the graph of an absolute value where we have a sharp corner rather than some kind of rounded top or bottom of our function. Having the sharp corner actually means that f prime of 2 does not exist. We actually can't find <clears throat> the slope of a tangent line at this point because there are essentially infinitely many tangent lines with infinitely many slopes. We could ima imagine a tangent line like that, right? It only touches our function at that one point. We could imagine a flat tangent line. We could imagine a tangent line like this. These are all tangent lines to this function at that point. And since there are infinitely many of them with infinitely many slopes, that tells us that there's not one value 
that corresponds with f prime of 2. And therefore, the derivative at 2 does not exist. So if you have an absolute value, this is basically what that looks like on a graph. And that's why the derivative does not exist there. However, the derivative not existing at a point means that we have to consider that x value as a critical number. That was one of the conditions. Either f prime of c has to equal 0, or f prime of c does not exist. So you can see both of those are represented in this function. So now if we want to find the critical points, we would basically just need a y value to correspond with each of these critical numbers. So a critical point is going to be an xy pair that lines up with each of our critical numbers. So we're going to have one where x is 2, and the y value of our function when x is 2 would be 0. And then if we look at the y value of our function when x is 4, so if we go over to 4, go up to our function, the y value here is 2. So our critical points are 2, 0, and 4, 2. So that's really all there is to finding the critical numbers and critical points on a graph. So now I want to show you how to do it with a function algebraically. Before I get into that though, if this is making sense so far, please drop a comment below to say, got it so far, so I know you're at least following along up to this point. And now let's go ahead and get into an example of, given an actual function, how to find the critical numbers and critical points of that function. So let's say that we are given f of x equals x to the 1 5th power times x minus 3. This is our function. We're trying to find the critical numbers and critical points of this function. So to do this, we're first going to have to take the derivative of it because we need to figure out where the derivative equals 0 or where the derivative does not exist. Before we do that, though, uh, well, there's a couple different ways we could take this derivative. We could either do it using the product rule, right, because we have this x to the 1 5th being multiplied by x minus 3. What we could also do is distribute our x to the 1 5th into each of those terms, and then we could take the derivative using the power rule. I think that'll be a little bit easier, so we'll do that instead. So x to the 1 5th times x, this is like x to the 1. When you're multiplying two things with the same base, you would just add the exponents. So 1 plus 1 5th would give us x to the 6 5th. And then 3 times x to the 1 5th would just be 3x to the 1 5th. OK, so now to take the derivative of this, to find f prime of x, we just need to use power rule. So we'll bring the power down in front. So 6 fifths x to the 1 fifth. 6 fifths minus 1 is the same as subtracting 5 fifths. And then that leaves us with 1 fifth. And then we'll have minus, oops, 3 times 1 fifth would be 3 fifths. And then x and then 1 fifth minus 5 fifths would be the same as subtracting out 1. That'll give us minus 4 fifths. So this is our derivative. So one thing to keep in mind, x to the negative 4 fifths is the same as 1 over x to the 4 fifths. If we put a 0 on our denominator, if we divide by 0, we know that our function would not be defined there. You can't divide by 0. So anything that would cause us to divide by 0, we know that that's going to be a critical number because our f prime of x would not be defined at that point. So if we imagine this would be, we would be dividing by 0 whenever our entire denominator equaled 0. So x to the 4 fifths equals 0. If there is an x value that causes this to happen, we know that's going to be a critical number. And in fact, that will just happen at x equals 0. <clears throat> we can imagine raising both sides of this equation to the 5 fourths power. And that would cause the powers to cancel. 0 to the 5 fourths is still 0. So we would just have x equals 0. So we know x equals 0 is one of our critical numbers. Now what we need to do to find any other critical numbers that exist is set this equal to 0. So our entire derivative equaling 0 will cause us to find our critical numbers. 
So what we can do here is we can actually factor out something because these terms both have something in common. They both have a one-fifth being multiplied by them, and they both have an x to the one-fifth power. So if we pull out those, if we pull out one-fifth x to the one-fifth from here, pulling out the one-fifth would just leave our coefficient as a six. And then if we pull out the x to the one-fifth, that's going to take this whole thing out. So that would only actually leave us with just a six there. And then if we pull one-fifth out of this one, our coefficient left would just be minus three. And then if we pull x to the one-fifth out, what you want to think about is what would you have to multiply x to the one-fifth by to give us x to the negative four-fifths. So that, again, just goes back to the fact that when we multiply two things with the same base, we would add their exponents. So if we multiply x to the negative one times x to the one-fifth, those have the same base, we would just add their powers. One-fifth minus one would give us negative four-fifths. So if we pull out x to the one-fifth, this term would just leave us with x to the negative one. So now, to figure out where this equals zero, this whole thing will equal zero whenever one of these factors equals zero, right? If this term here equals zero, we would get zero times some other number, and the whole thing would be zero. Or if this term equals zero, we would get zero times some other thing, and the whole thing would equal zero. Well, this will equal zero when x equals zero. So we've already accounted for that critical number. So all we really need to do is figure out where this term here equals zero, and that'll give us our other critical number. So to do that, I'm just going to erase a bit up here and move it up a bit. So we just need to figure out where six minus three over x equals zero, right? Because x to the negative one would be the same as one over x. So three times one over x would be three over x. So we can add three over x to the other side. So that'll give us six equals three over x. And then we can multiply both sides by x to cancel that. And that'll just give us six x equals three. And then we can divide both sides by six and that'll tell us x equals one half. So our critical numbers are x equals one half and x equals zero. But now we wanna find our critical points. To do that, all we have to do is take our x values and plug them into our function here. So if we plug zero in, we're gonna get zero times negative three. Zero times negative three is just zero. So that's gonna give us zero, zero. And then if we plug one half in here, that's not gonna give us a very nice number. We're gonna end up with one half, one half negative five halves times one half to the one fifth. So that's kind of a nasty y value, but these would be our critical points right here that would correspond with our critical values of zero and one half.